Medical problems are something that we hear about everywhere, from the news and our friends, but we never think it could happen to us or someone close to us. I'm Harry Klump, and I experienced one of the most dreadful nights of my life last Christmas. 2014, my mum had an incident where she started shaking, and we thought she was having a heart attack. But the doctors told us it was just a viral infection. My family figured that the doctors knew what they were talking about and dismissed the incident. Two years later, my family and I were on a camping trip in our caravan. We were all sitting around two nights before we had to leave and head home when mum started complaining of a sore arm and that she had pins and needles in her fingers. I jokingly said, if we have to go back to the hospital, don't wake me. 8pm, the lights and TV went off and we all went to bed. My dad woke me and said get changed and take him under the car or go into the hospital. I can relay the, the events of the night perfectly. I found mum at the toilets and walked her to the car. We dropped, I was dropped with mum at the door and we walked into emergency. We saw the triage and she was admitted instantly. This makes a person worried because hospitals have never been that quick. Now we've all heard the phrase, heart skipped a beat. And I was standing there in the room with my mum watching the ECG, seeing her heart actually skip a beat. Her heart rate would climb, then fall for two hours. Now the resting heart rate for a human is anywhere between 60 to 100 beats per minute. And a human's heart rate while exercising is anywhere between 150 to 180 beats per minute. It was midnight and all was normal when mum's heart rate spiked up to 130, then it kept going up and up until it hit 200. Obviously, my brother and I are distraught, and my mum told my dad to take us out of the room. We were outside in the waiting room, and my brother threw up from stress and fear. Then the nurse came out after 10 agonising minutes and told us she was fine, but we needed to get her to the cardiologist. Arrhythmia. It's a disease involving the heart, but not many people know about it. If I ask you to name a heart condition, I'm sure most of you think heart attack. But there are more diseases than just heart attack. In 2014, 8,623 Australians died from a heart attack, and 2,131 Australians died from cardiac arrhythmias in 2014. Now, I understand most of you are thinking 2,000 compared to 8,000, it's easy to decide to focus on what, cu what to cure. But heart attacks are sudden events, sudden events, whereas arrhythmias build up. Arrhythmias have also been linked to many other cardiovascular diseases, such as coronary heart disease which has claimed 19,777 Australian lives in 2015. What is arrhythmia? Arrhythmia is a term used to describe a large group of diseases affecting the electrical activity of the heart. However, each with slightly different effects. Arrhythmia can be broken up into two main types, tachycardia and bradycardia. Tachycardia is when the heart beats above 100 beats per minute while the person is at rest. Tachycardia can have severe consequences if left untreated, such as heart failure, stroke, cardiac arrest, and in extreme cases, death. Tachycardia is broken up into specific diseases depending on what section of the heart the disruption of regular heart function is occurring. Bradycardia is the polar opposite. It is when the heart beats less than 60, 60 beats per minute. Bradycardia becomes problematic if the heart isn't pumping enough oxygen-rich blood around the body, this can cause complications such as fainting, heart failure, sudden cardiac arrest, and sudden death. Treatments vary depending on where you go. My mum has been to many places and she has been told many different things. The first of which is caffeine is a big no-go if you have an arrhythmia. Her cardiologist then went on to say, this is complete BS. We were confused as to what was true, so we did some research. Studies have shown by many institutions that caffeine is linked to cardiac arrhythmias. However, their studies prove that the most lethal, lethal arrhythmias only occurred when large amounts of caffeine, 500 plus milligrams, or roughly five standard cups of coffee, were consumed. The second of treatments were beta blockers. Beta blockers work by blocking the effects of epinephrine, which is more commonly known as adrenaline. I will admit they worked in stopping her arrhythmia. However, I witnessed a diminish in her mental health. She woke up tired and was less engaged in day-to-day -day activities. This also caused a major problem in her operation, which is a cardiac ablation. It is the common procedure used to eradicate arrhythmia. However, it relies on adrenaline to tell the doctors where to burn. Coralin contains the active ingredient ivabradine. Ivabradine works by slowing the heart rate, however, doesn't cause the tiredness like beta blockers do. All of these methods work, however, all contain risks and side effects. In conclusion, Arrhythmia has claimed thousands of lives and will continue to claim thousands unless something is done to stop this. 
The goal of medicine is to prolong life and prevent disease. Thus, I believe that more prevalence should be placed on finding a 100% risk-free cure, as it would save thousands of lives and, then pre and also prevent deterioration of the person's health post-treatment. With the risk-free cure, it prevents disease as well as prolonging a healthier, happier life.